Hello and assalamu alaikum. Um, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about the one sample t-test. Um, it's a fairly simple test. It, it is only used to make an inference about a population mean based on our sample statistics. Okay, we have a sample and we compare it against um, a hypothesized value. Okay, so the objective is to test if the population mean is equal to a hypothesized value. Okay, so the um, you can see the hypothesis there, uh, mean equals to um, zero or hypothesized value versus mean uh, does not equal to the hypothesized value. Okay, so the statistics of interest is the standardized difference from the target, uh, which is your t-score, um, the two-tailed probability of type 1 uh, or of type 1 error or the p-value itself, the 95% confidence interval for the mean differences, uh, effect size, if you want to calculate it, that's the formula and the 95% confidence interval for the population mean. So this, uh, the differences between number 3 and number 5 is that number 5, we add in the lower bound and upper bound to the hypothesized value in order for us to um, infer to the mean, the population mean. Okay, so the DF um, for the one sample t is um, n-1. Okay, um, as with all statistical analysis, we also have assumptions for the one sample t. Uh, main assumption is that the uh, test variable or the dv um, is approximately normally distributed um, okay in most circumstances uh, with large sample size of more than 30 um, then our central limit theorem will kick in the test will yield relatively normal results okay dv must be continuous okay observations are independent of one another or mutually exclusive and dv should not contain any outliers so here's an example. A researcher wanted to know if the mean BMI among a group of master students is 22. He took a random sample of 36 students. So the observation we have is 36. Measured their heights and weights and computed the BMI value. The BMI values are given below. Objective is to test if the mean BMI in the population is 22. So the um, hypothesis for the H null is the master student's BMI is 22. And with the alternative hypothesis is the master student's BMI is not 32. Okay, so this is how you obtain a one sample t-test. Okay, so we go to analyze, go to compare means, one sample t-test, and then just click the test variable, and then the test value we want to test if it's 22 or not, click on OK, and then wait for the results. So there you go, we have our one sample to statistics and one sample test uh, value. Okay, as you can see over here, it is significant, so that means that uh, we reject the null. So our null is that the hypothesized BMI or is equal to 22, so that means it is not equal to 22. Okay, so let's go back here. So sample mean for the 36 subjects is 24.08 with a standard deviation of 3.367. Standard error is equal to 0.56. Okay, so this is how you calculate the t-score and this is how you calculate the df over here. The findings is that the mean difference is 2.083 um, over here. Standardized difference which is t, uh, 3.713 and df equals to 35. Two-tailed p-value of the test is less than 0 0.05. 95% um, confidence interval for mean differences is um, the lower bound is 0 0.94. Upper bound is 3.22 which does not contain the value of 0. Partial eta squared, if you want to calculate, and that's the formula, that's how you calculate it. Um, the 95% confidence interval for population mean is um, your lower bound uh, plus your hypothesized value. Upper bound plus hypothesized value, you're going to get 22.94 and 25.22. So how do you write it in APA format? A one sample t-test was run to determine whether the master student's BMI is not 22 or is 22. Okay. The mean BMI score, uh, you have to write down the mean and the standard deviation, higher than the normal BMI score of 22, a statistically significant mean difference of 2.08 um, at the 95% confidence interval between uh, 0 0.94 to 3.32, T with the DF of 35 equals to 3.713 with a p-value of less than 0 0.05. We are 95% confident that the mean BMI for the population will fall between 22.94 to 25.22. So this is where you can pause and try this on your own, the exercise, okay, this is where you pause the video, try this on your own and then you compare it to my answers. 
So a restaurant manager wants to know if the main turnaround time during lunch for his restaurant exceeds 50 minutes. He managed to randomly record 33 table turnaround time over the past week. Turnaround time for the 33 tables are given below. Provide the objectives, hypothesis, outputs, findings, and conclusion. This is something that you have to do, provide the objective hypothesis. You need to practice this because probably in the exam, um, questions like this will, will come up. Okay, okay. so I have already inputted the data in my SPSS. You click on analyze again, compare means, and this is a one sample T. We want to test if it's more than 50 minutes, right? So click in 50 and run. So that's the results over that. If you can see, um, so mean is 50.15. It's not, it's not far away from the hypothesized mean, right? So therefore, you can see here it is not significant. So here's the objective and the hypothesis. Um, sample mean for the 33 observations is 50.15 with the standard deviation of 9.89. The standard error is 1.72. Um, as you can see, mean difference is uh, 0.152. Standard test difference is um, 0 0.88 and DF is 32. The two tailed p-value of the test is um, more than 0 0.05, okay, equals to 0.93. Um, when it is insignificant, when it is not significant, you have to write the real value of the p. When it is um, significant, then you just um, just write it as uh, p-value is less than 0 0.05 or p-value is less than 0 0.001. The 95% confidence interval for mean differences is uh, negative uh, 3.36 and 3.66. So it's a negative and positive, so it contains zero, right? So hence explaining uh, why our, our test is not significant. 95% confidence interval for the population mean is um, you just add the lower bound with the hypothesis value and then you're going to get 46.64 and 53.66. Um, don't forget to write the APA results over here. Okay. Okay, here's our second exercise. So we want to see if the producer of an infant milk formula, um, they claim that the minimum calcium content in their product is 10 grams over uh, for every 100 milliliter. However, a consumer group believed that the calcium content in the infant formula was less than 10 grams per 100 milliliters. So the consumer group selected 44 tins, uh, randomly selected the 44 tins of the infant formula and tested the calcium content in the lab. The calcium contents per 100 ml for 44 tins are given below. Okay, so remember to provide the objective, hypothesis, output findings as well as conclusion. Um, or you can write the conclusion in a APA format. Um, do this as well for your homework, okay? Right, let me just show you how do we calculate this. Uh, analyze again, it's going to be um, one sample T. So we're going to test whether it's it's 10, right? 10 grams, so at least it's 10. So 10 grams per 100 milliliter, okay. So I just click here and click OK. Very easy, right? So I shouldn't have any issue with a one sample T. So the hard part is for us to be reading the um, output. And that's why interpretation is very important. So compare your objective and hypothesis with mine, whether it's similar, whether it says the same thing. Sample mean for the 44 tins is uh, 9.56 grams over 100 ml. The standard deviation of um, 0 0.60. Um, the standard error is 0 0.0903 per 100 ml. Let's take a look at the. Um, there you go. Okay. It's the same. Um, it is significant. Okay. Oh, but if you can see here, it is both negative. Okay, so it does not pass zero. Right. So the conclusion, 95, uh, sorry, uh, let's take a look at the findings first. Uh, mean difference is um, 0.446. Standardized difference is here. And the DF of 43 because our sample size is 44. Two-tailed p-value of the test is less than 0 0.001, which is less than 0 0.05, which is significant. Okay, 95% confidence interval is between um, 0.628 and 0.263, which does not contain the value of 0. 95% confidence um, interval for population mean is um, you just add to the hypothesized value. You're going to get this one here. So the 95% confidence interval does not contain zero. P value is um, significant. We can say that um, less than 10 grams of the calcium co is contained for every 100 ml of milk. 
we only have less than 10 grams because the mean is actually 9.5 or 9.56 okay that is less than 10 grams we are 95% confident that the mean calcium for every 100 ml of milk is between 9.372 and 9.737 is that 10 that's not 10 okay so the consumer group can actually sue the uh, manufacturer there you go so um this is your homework you can have fun doing this homework and then they submit it by the end of um, before our class next week. Uh, thank you very much. I shall see you again in our next video. Bye.